functions, clearing the excrement. In the previous video, we saw that the correct definition of a function is simply that it is a rule that assigns each and every element in the domain to one and exactly one element in the codomain. In class, your bad math teacher might have taught you that a function is a formula. So for example, we have the formula fx equals to the square root of 1 minus x squared. She might also have encouraged you to think of a function as a machine. You give the machine input of x, and the machine is going to spit out output. In this case, the output will be the square root of 1 minus x squared. In the previous video, we already saw what the famous mathematician Robin Williams thought about all this. He thinks that there are two big problems with thinking of a function as a formula or as a machine. The first big problem is that when we say that a function is just a formula or a machine, we have failed to state what the domain and the codomain are. So with respect to the domain, Robin Williams is going to ask, what sort of inputs can we put into the machine? Could we put, for example, an apple into this machine? And would the machine then give us as output the square root of 1 minus apple squared? But this is clearly absurd. Well, of course what I meant to say was that the inputs must be numbers. Ah, Robin Williams says, so what you mean is that the domain must be the set of real numbers. Sure, if it's how you want to put it. And what about the codomain? I'm not sure what exactly you mean, but I guess they'd just be numbers too. Ah, so you mean to say that the codomain is also the set of real numbers? Sure, whatever that's supposed to mean. Very good, so we have a function f with domain r and codomain r with the above as the assignment rule. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the formula we're using for the function, yeah. Great, so now let's try to write down this function properly. The function f has domain r and codomain r. The function f is going to map each element in the domain x to the square root of 1 minus x squared. The problem though is that this is not a function at all. It fails to assign each and every element in the domain to exactly one element in the codomain. For example, if we take the element 2 from the domain, and 2 is certainly in the domain because it's a real number, and we apply the function f to the number 2, what we're going to get in return is the square root of 1 minus 2 squared, which is just the square root of negative 3. However, the square root of negative 3 is not a real number, so it's not in the codomain at all. So what we have here is not a function at all. So what are some possible fixes for this? Or in other words, how can we change the function f so that it becomes a proper function? Here are three possible fixes. The first possible fix is to change the domain. So we could have a function g, which still has as the codomain r, and it still maps each element x in the domain to the square root of 1 minus x squared. But now we're going to change the domain to the set of real numbers between negative 1 and 1, including negative 1 and 1 themselves. Notice that with this change, g now maps every element in the domain to some element in the codomain. Because if we take any number x between negative 1 and 1, and apply the function g to it, what we'll get is a real number. A second possible fix is to change the codomain. So in the function h, we'll keep the domain the same as before, and we'll also keep the assignment rule the same as before. However, now the codomain will be changed to c, that is, the set of all complex numbers. Don't be too worried if you haven't seen this set before. At this point, all we need to know about this set of complex numbers is that it includes all the real numbers, and it also includes such numbers as the square root of negative 3. And, more generally, it includes the square root of any negative number. Hence, now that we've changed the codomain to the set of complex numbers, we see that the newly constructed function h is indeed a function, because it maps each real number to some one single complex number. In other words, it maps each element in the domain r to some single element in the codomain c. A third possible fix now is to change the assignment rule. We'll construct the function i so that it has the same domain and codomain as f. But we'll now change the assignment rule. The function i will now map each element x in the domain to the square root of the absolute value of 1 minus x squared. Notice that because the stuff in the square root operator is now always non-negative, we can be sure that the function i indeed maps every real number to some real number also. Which is to say that i is indeed a function because it maps each element in the domain to some single element in the codomain. So previously we had something called f but which was not a function at all. In contrast, what we've just done is to construct three proper functions, g, h, and i. 
Now, it is very important to note and to stress that G, H, and I are not merely three different ways of writing the same function. Instead, they are three completely different functions. The very important point here is that when talking about functions, we need to specify three things, the domain, the co-domain, and the assignment rule. It is not sufficient to just talk about the assignment rule because we are liable to run into trouble as we saw here with the supposed function f. So when the bad math teacher referred to functions as being formulas or as machines, the first big problem was that this completely omits any mention of what the domain and the codomain are. We are now going to talk about the second big problem with thinking of functions as formulas or machines. A function can be any assignment rule. In particular, it doesn't need to make any sense whatsoever. In contrast, when thinking of functions as formulas or as machines, this tends to give the impression that the function must somehow make some sort of sense. But this is not in fact the case. Let's look at some examples. Suppose we have a function g with domain a consisting of France, Japan, and Nepal. And g has code domain b which consists of Japanese, French, and Nepali. Now, if g is a function that makes sense, so to speak, it would naturally be the function where France is mapped to French, Japan is mapped to Japanese, and Nepal is mapped to Nepali. g is simply the function that maps each country to its national language. So g is indeed a function. In contrast, let's consider the function h, which has the same domain a and the same codomain b. The function h will map France to Nepali, Japan to French, and Nepal to Japanese. Now, this doesn't seem to make any sense at all. We seem to be randomly matching each country in the domain to some language in the codomain. But yet, h is also a completely proper function. Just because the function h doesn't seem to make any sense at all, doesn't mean that it's not a function it is still a function. To qualify as a function, h need not make any sense at all. So long as h satisfies the requirement of mapping each element in the domain to exactly one element in the codomain, then we are going to call it a function. It does not need to make any sense whatsoever. In contrast, if we persist in thinking of functions as formulas or as machines, then we are led to the suggestion that h is somehow not a proper function. But this is incorrect. h is a completely proper function. There is nothing wrong with it at all. And it is indeed a function because it maps each element in the domain to some single element in the codomain. Let's end this video with a teaser. We have repeatedly stressed that a function is a rule that assigns each and every element in the domain to one and exactly one element in the codomain. This definition is perfectly fine and there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. However, it turns out that mathematicians favor a more rigorous and precise definition of what functions are. Mathematicians actually define functions as a set. In particular, they define a function to be a subset of the Cartesian product of the domain and the codomain of the function. Now, of course, you haven't learned yet what a subset or a Cartesian product is, but this is exactly what we'll be covering in the upcoming videos.